So I'm going to talk a little bit about inner systems. That's not what you want to see. Are you seeing the full screen view? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Okay. I'm going to talk a lot a bit, a little bit about inner systems um, from an open source and just an open, open in general perspective. So my name is Raj Singh. I'm from product management at Inner Systems, and I'm focused on the developer experience. Um, and like I said, first we're going to talk a little bit about how Inner Systems is uh, an open platform. I think. And then I'll talk a little bit about a couple specific open source projects, some of the bigger ones we have going on, and and then talk about how we how we uh, nurture our open source community and our developer community in general. <clears throat> and that will lead up to our I2B2 work, which first line we'll talk about, and uh, that'll sum up our session. So, talking about inner systems as an open. <laughs> as an open company or open technology. Um, for those of you familiar with the company from decades past, that may sound like a little bit of a contradiction in terms because I don't think we have been very active in the past in open source communities. Um, but that's certainly changing and it's changing really fast. We've probably done more in the open source ecosystem in the last two or three years than in the whole rest of our history. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to get a little geeky on system architecture for a second, but this is all to describe how, you know, how you can have more flexibility as a developer on top of your database platform. <clears throat> so first of all, pretty much every database vendor, or every data platform out there allows you freedom of choice in the language, in the programming language you use. So you'll be able to use Java, you know, Python, Node.js, all the usual suspects. But generally, your mode of access or using those language and accessing data via those languages will be through, uh, through SQL and through a database driver that understands SQL, either an ODBC driver or a JDBC driver in the case of Java. And there's some problems with that. Uh, first of all, you know, that driver can be sitting or your, your programming client can be sitting anywhere on the internet. So there's a big bandwidth bottleneck there when everything is going through the driver. Uh, second of all, you are only limited to SQL there. So, you know, while you're writing in your language of choice, what you're really doing is writing SQL. So the industry solved that problem by inventing stored procedures. And you may be familiar with PL SQL if you're an Oracle user. Um, stored procedures get, you know, get your programming or get your logic out of the internet and into the database so that you can do higher, um, higher performance type things. But you still have a huge problem in that. If you've ever written stored procedures or PL SQL, it's, it's not fun. It's not a fun programming environment to write in error prone, and you're probably not going to want any program of any real size. I want to write any program of any real size in, in stored procedures. So you're still left with this problem where, you know, you probably have your program running externally on another server, and you have certain things that really need to be optimized running as stored procedures, and you're calling those from your language. That's a complicated architecture, not the best. So what inner systems does is that, you know, as, as Chi mentioned, we have this, <laughs> we started with this language called mumps and it evolved and became eventually object script. And a lot of, a lot of our offerings are written in that language. You know, some are written in, in C++ and compiled natively to, to platform of choice, but a lot of what you get when you get the data platform is written in object script itself. And as a developer, when you write object script, that really is what makes uh, inner systems uh, an open platform. Because not only do you now get a language which is written close to the database, I mean, your programs are running close to the database, they're sharing memory with the data, so they're incredibly performant, but you're using a real programming language that's 
much more intuitive and understandable by a programmer than something like stored procedures. Uh, reads more like, like a Python or something like that. And the performance of your code is just like the performance of our own because it's all object script. And uh, in addition to that, you know, a lot of our, a lot of our alpha programmers will actually look at the object strip code um, that we have written and ships with the product to get ideas about how to extend it. So that's the story currently. And what is really exciting is that coming very, very soon is the ability to avoid object script completely and write in write your uh, database specific uh, code in Python. Because a lot of people have said in the past that, you know, the idea of object script sounds great, but I don't want to learn yet another language. It's not really portable for my career. And, you know, it would be much better if I could just stick with something I know. And so we've been working very hard to make Python a first class uh, citizen of the database. Okay, so, you know, in that sense, the whole InterSystems Iris platform is very open. And we also have some components, some open source components that we've been nurturing lately. Uh, the first one, the first major project that we moved from the commercial product into the open source environment is the Ino Natural Language Processing Engine. And so, you know, this is a traditional NLP engine. It does uh, concept extraction, sort of, and you can see some examples here. You know, you can pull out various keywords or key phrases from a corpus of text. And that's the first step in being able to do some, um, some important analyses. So just as an example, you know, when you're, when you're extracting text from, for, when you're extracting keywords from text, you don't want to just pull out words because you won't get the whole context. And here's an example we have on the, the readme of the, uh, the repository for INO. So dopamine, that word alone is a small molecule, but if you see dopamine receptor, that's a drug target, and dopamine receptor antagonist is a chemical drug, and dopamine, dopamine receptor gene, so on, a gene molecular sequence, and a dopamine receptor gene mutation is yet another thing, this physiological process. So, you know, what a word or a series of word means really depends greatly on its, on its context. And probably, you know, there is no field where that is the case more so than the healthcare field. And uh, our INO engine has been used pretty extensively in healthcare and developed and nurtured by healthcare developers. So it's very good at, at working in this vertical. So just to step back a second, I know NLP Engine was, uh, was a company in 2001, and it was used by InterSystems and InterSystems developer a lot, so much so that in 2010 it was acquired. And it was sold as an embedded engine within the, within the database engine. Um, in 2020, just uh, a, about a year and a half ago, we decided to open source it, put it on GitHub. And so now not only do you get it inside InterSystems Iris, you can also get it uh, right from GitHub and use it either in conjunction with the database or as a standalone piece or however you want. So we did this for, for all the reasons why people you know, often go to an open source model. It really helps our developers it allows us much greater flexibility in how our customers can make use of it. Uh, it can it can evolve much more agilely. Some of our some of our most exciting projects came about with a close collaboration with a customer who was who was customizing. I know, and those improvements couldn't always make it back into the product due to various organizational constraints in an open source environment these things can happen a lot more dynamically and you know this thing can grow 
basically by the, the will of the community. So please, if you're interested in, if you need a, if you need a good NLP engine, please go check it out. You can just pip install I know Pi, or you can go to the GitHub repository and, and explore it there. Now the second big project I want to talk about is our effort to create a new IDE for object script. Uh, we had about a year and a half ago, we had hit a wall with, uh, with uh, one of our IDEs, Atelier, and we, we really felt like it wasn't worth investing in that platform, in the Eclipse platform anymore. It had sort of been eclipsed by, it had been, that's no, no pun intended, but it had been eclipsed by very, many other IDE platforms. And we wanted to do something which would be much more future proof. And through that, we, uh, <clears throat> we eventually picked the, the Visual Studio Code open source project, which is largely sponsored by Microsoft as a great IDE to build on. And we set out to build one object script extension, but it turned out to be make more sense to build three. Uh, one thing to know about object script as a language which sits close to the database, you can only compile it and run it in a database. You can't just like a Python or Java, you can't compile the code on your laptop um, and run stuff if it doesn't have any database access. Uh, you can't just, you know, most languages you can just run programs on your laptop with with uh, object script, you have to have a database behind there, compiling it and running it. So managing connections to all the databases that you use as a developer is very important. So we split out that piece of the, of the puzzle to an extension called server manager. So you can manage all your connections to different uh, instances of InterSystems Iris and Cache through the server manager extension. And then you can use that either in the object script extension, which helps you, you know, syntax color object script code and quickly compile and, and run and debug. And you can also use it in extension we have for SQL. Um, and the language server piece is, I'm gonna skip that because that gets into highly technical area about how to write, <clears throat> how to build uh, good IDEs, which probably isn't relevant to this group. But there's a third piece, the third extension we wrote called the language server, which helps make, helps with um, really accurate syntax coloring and code completion capabilities for the language. Now, as I mentioned, we also have a extension to another open source project called SQL tools, where we added, um, we added our own driver for Iris to this project, which already includes drivers for SQLite and Postgres and AWS Redshift and Oracle and a lot of commercial databases. But this gives you the ability to do a, some really nice, um, provides a really nice UI for SQL, for writing SQL and showing the results in the IDE. So those are just some projects, but I think what's more important than the projects themselves are the community we've developed around them and how much attention we've paid to making sure that there's a balance between um, our, co our corporate interests and the community's interests. Because no company will be successful unless its developers are happy, or at least that's what I believe. And so this is a little screenshot of the, screenshot of the issues board. You'll see that we have in just about, well, really only nine months of being at 1.0 in public version. We have a very vibrant community. We're closing issues uh, much faster than we're opening them. We're getting feedback from you know, all over the, all levels of developer all over the world. And so the project is being really successful. And I think a big piece of that is setting up the governance structure so that the corporate interest is equal to the developer's interest. And we have a voting board with 50% uh, rep representation from inner systems and 50% from the community. So that nothing's ever come to this. We, you know, we first try to, we first strive for consensus, but if it comes to a vote, nobody can get something passed 
without at least some support from the other side. So inner systems can't push something through without some developer support, and the developer community can't push anything through without some inner system support. So I think it, you know, even though we've never had to vote, just having that in place builds a lot of trust and a lot of upfront acknowledgement that we're, you know, that we're all in this together and we have a shared interest here. And I think um, this is what we hope to bring to the ITV2 community with, uh, with adding support for inner systems to the I2B2 stack. And I'm just gonna finish up with a quick look at our uh, site Open Exchange, which is our marketplace of all things inner systems, oh, actually open source and closed source for all the offerings that uh, our developer community wants to share with uh, customers. And so you can check this out at, at your leisure, openexchange.innersystems.com. We're up to almost 500 applications, a lot of interesting things there. Um, one thing we do is we highlight the companies that have participated because we love our partners. And see George James Software here who helped us with the IDE as well as Carrot Dev, two big uh, object script IDE developers, First Line Software, who you're gonna hear from in a minute is here as well. You can also go through one of the things we've done to really cultivate this community is sponsor developer contests <clears throat> on various topics. So recently we had a, a contest to build applications around the fire standard, which we just heard a lot about. Uh, we've done multi-model interoperability, full stack application development, and lots of things which really seeded the, the marketplace with a lot of great sample applications and code bases. That, our customers can, can use and build upon. And as you go down into these applications, you'll see they're often windows into GitHub, although we've cons this is really uh, you know, a one-stop shop to get at things from anywhere, whether it's GitHub or GitLab or, or any other uh, open source site. And we'll see here at the end is uh, I2B2 on Iris application technology example, which we're going to hear about now from Anatoly. Thank you, Raj. We did have one question uh, pop up in the question and answer box, and they wanted to know if I know works uh, just in English. Actually, there it supports, I don't remember the languages off the top of my head, but there there's a pretty long list. All right. If you have any links that you can share in the chat, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Thank you.